Good evening guys and girls who are preparing for USMLE. This evening I would like to discuss a few things about pelvic inflammatory disorder. Especially the most important points we need to remember when we prepare for USMLE. As always welcome to our website at uh, www.usmlevideos.net Please visit our website and uh, browse through hundreds of videos we already posted and uh, it's an opportunity if you spend as little as 10 minutes every day it's an opportunity to learn so many things by the time you sit for the examination tonight let me give you a few uh, important points about uh, pelvic inflammatory disease pelvic inflammatory disease let us first define it it is the inflammation of the upper genital tract it is the inflammation of the upper genital tract. It includes pelvic peritonitis, endometritis, salpingitis, and tubo ovarian abscess. Now, what are the infectious causes that cause pelvic inflammatory disorder? Number one, Neisseria gonorrhea, Chlamydia trichomatis, these are the two most important organisms that cause PID. But there are other causes also, like anaerobic bacteria like Peptostreptococcus. So basically, these are the two most important uh, organisms. Now, the risk factors. The risk factors number one is nulliparity. Number two is multiple sexual partners. Number three is smoking. Number four, vaginosis. Number five, IUD insertion. Number six, docking. So these are the basic risk factors. In fact, the typical PID patient would be a young, nulliparous, sexually active female with multiple sex partners. That is the typical patient for PID. Now, symptoms and signs. The basic thing you need to remember is lower abdominal pain, adnexal tenderness, cervical motion tenderness, fever, cervical mucopurulent discharge, anorexia, nausea, vomiting, dyspareunia, infertility. These are the symptoms and signs, but they don't have to present in order to diagnose pelvic inflammatory disease. The most important factor to diagnose PID is the awareness of the clinicians. You need to suspect that because these symptoms are not present all the time. Now, diagnosis. First rule out pregnancy, that is very very important in any young female when she comes to your clinic. Then do a CBC, do an ESR, it is usually elevated, do a C-reactive protein, usually elevated, and do a saline wet mount, usually you see neutrophils. If you see numerous neutrophils on saline mount, it is PID unless otherwise specified. Then pelvic ultrasound. You can also do endometrial biopsy. That is actually the confirmatory test for endometritis. You can also do laparoscopy. That's a gold standard for salpingitis. Those are the most important diagnostic tests. Now coming to treatment, there are uh, oral regimens and parenteral regimens. Oral regimens, number one, Ofloxacin with or without metronidazole. Number two, ceftriaxone IM or cefoxetine IM plus doxycycline with or without metronidazole. Parenteral regimens include these cefotetan or cefoxetine plus doxycycline, then clindamycin plus gentamicin. There are ofloxacin with or without metronidazole or ampicillin plus doxycycline. So these are the basic regimens. You need to remember these very, very well because you will get questions on this. 
And the other point is to determine whether the patient needs an outpatient treatment or inpatient treatment. If the patient is pregnant, if the patient has tubal ovarian abscess, if the patient cannot be trusted for outpatient treatment, if the patient has high temperature, if, we, if you cannot rule out appendicitis as the cause of uh, lower abdominal pain, in those circumstances you should admit the patient in order to treat her. Otherwise, it's okay to treat on outpatient basis. In fact, studies, studies revealed no difference between outpatient treatment and inpatient treatment. Now, what if the patient has tubal ovarian abscess? If the patient has tubal ovarian abscess, you certainly admit that patient and uh, you should do an aspiration. It could be a vaginal aspiration or abdominal aspiration. You should aspirate that ovarian abscess. That is the treatment, surgical treatment. Now let me give you uh, some key points you should remember. As I said, the typical patient is young, nulliparous, sexually active woman with multiple sex partners. The most common serious infection acquired by sexually active woman is PID. Then what are the most common infections that cause PID? Neisseria, gonorrhea and chlamydia trachomatis. Now there is a syndrome called fitz hug curtis syndrome. fitz hug curtis syndrome is simply when the infection from the genital tract it goes to liver and infects the liver capsule and causes perihepatitis, the woman comes with PID and upper right upper quadrant pain. So that is called fish hug curtis syndrome. Very, very important. Please remember that. Patient with the tubo ovarian abscess, how do you treat? Inpatient or outpatient? You should treat inpatient. What is the gold standard? for detecting salpingitis. The gold standard is laparoscopy. Now, what are the most common complications of PID? Number one is infertility. Number two, ectopic pregnancy. Number three, chronic pelvic pain. So these three are very, very important. Infertility, then chronic pelvic pain, and ectopic pregnancy. These are the three most common complications you need to remember. So usually the case will come like this. A patient came, she is young, sexually active, multiple sex partners, complaints of lower abdominal pain, vital signs reveal fever, high temperature. Uh, laboratory test shows like WBC more than 10,000 cells per cubic, uh, cubic meter. Then um, C-reactive protein is elevated, ESR is elevated. Then uh, you took a laparoscopy or you took uh, a pelvic ultrasound. It showed some fluid in the tube of ovarian complex. What is your diagnosis? The diagnosis is pelvic inflammatory disease. Always remember this. This is very, very important. And uh, if you want to explore more diseases, please visit our website at www.usmlevideos.net that is www.usmlevideos.net where we share the most important points that you must know before you take USML exam. Thank you.